Dubček was someone who has brought, uh, I would say, a great hope, not only for Czechs and Slovaks, but generally for, for Europe. We remember uh, the year 68 was a year of great turbulences all over the world and the whole movie of hippies and Rudy Duczka in Germany and so on. The American war in Vietnam and so on. So the world was in this time very turbulent. And Dubček was someone, can you imagine, I, I lived in a political social system where uh, everything was very, very official, I would say. And even the politic, politicians, political faces were very official. And then suddenly Dubček came, we, we have seen for the first time in our, in our lives, a politician with his wife. And we recognize that they have families, they have children, and so on. Okay, anyway, I started to travel and I recognize more and more that Dubček was, especially in Europe, in uh, West European countries, very popular. And then imagine I traveled, I compared my travels in Europe with my travels around Slovakia or around Czechoslovakia. And I have seen that the young people, they did not, didn't know too much about Dubček. Generally, somehow they were interested in new businesses and new jobs, you know, and many new possibilities. So I said to myself, okay, you have to do something. The more that you knew Dubček personally, this guy from Bratislava, the same as me. And so, but I said, Dubček is a very positive example. He's a, he was not the kind of a leader, you know, but he was a leader of, of, of human face. He did, he was the, the, the leader of this Prague Spring with the human face and socialism with human face. When I, in, in, uh, in uh, August, imagine two days before the Soviet invasion, at the 19th of August, 1968, uh, I met a German a volleyball player. I played volleyball at the time, a volleyball player from West Germany. His name was Thomas, Thomas Angerman. We were friends. Then, at the in the 9th of 20th August, when from the east the Soviet panzers came, they, this German, West Germany volleyball team left Slovakia or Czechoslovakia, they, they went back to Germany. Border was closed after the invasion. Imagine Four, that means 68, eight, uh, 89, that's more than 20 years. And my friendship with Thomas stopped for 20 years. I was looking for him even when I was already a member of the Slovak parliament, but I knew about him only that his name was Thomas. He was the same age as I was in 1948, born, and he lived in a small city called Neuwitz, next to Bonn uh, in, in, in Germany. And in 2004, my elderly daughter, she went to Munich. She was there in the European office for patents. And I asked her before Christmas, imagine 2004, Maria, be so kind and try if you have free time, go, go on, on your computer and try to find Thomas Angerman. <laughs> I was looking for, you know, this was so emotional in 68. And uh, I knew that his imagination is unbelievable because there are thousands and thousands of Thomas Angerman in Germany. But one day, two days before Christmas, I've got a pocket from, from Germany. I'm opening the pocket and there were photos of, of a guy. It seemed to me I know him some from some. And then I have started to read emails between my daughter and Thomas Angerman. Now imagine what happened. She started to look for him on PC. And then I called her immediately when having got this, this pocket. Maria, what happened? How it's possible that you, you have contact with Thomas? And she said to me, Father, it's unbelievable. I have taken all Thomas Angermans in Germany, thousands and thousands of Thomas Angermans. And I start, and I said to myself, there is no hope. I can't, I can't find a guy like this on this way. But then I said to myself, but I will call, I will call one of them, one of them. I called one of them and that was our Thomas Angerman. <laughs> Unbelievable. You can imagine. And then when the book was written, 
Thomas helped me a lot. We met more time in the meantime. Then he came to Bratislava. We, we together launched the book in one big theater in Bratislava. And we stayed, we stood on the stage, we both, then we, we cried. <laughs> it was so impressive. So I said to myself, this is a novel which was written by from your, your heart. Thank you.